welcome to this Premiere Pro tutorial where you'll learn how to get this VHS look. This is a great example of how you can apply multiple effects and things that you've learned if you've taken the whole Premiere Pro course from me to get your desired style. So the clip that I'm going to be using is this rollerblading clip. Thanks to Rodney Productions for posting this to Pexels.com. Here you can also see the original clip. So it's shot in a format that wasn't popular in the 80s and 90s when shooting on tape was popular. The colors don't really look like they are shot on tape. So we're going to be playing with a lot of stuff here in this clip. Another thing that I did was I searched for 1980s video on YouTube. And this video, it's a good one where you can just see from the colors, the exposures, the things that you get on tape are a lot different than what we get now with our cameras, our phones, everything we shoot video with. And so it's a good thing to kind of look at real footage and not just base what you are creating a style on other tutorials. There's lots of tutorials out there for VHS style and they're, there's, they're great ones and I've pulled some of the tricks and effects that I've learned from those tutorials but some of the stuff just doesn't look, it's a little bit too powerful. So let's get into Premiere Pro and the first thing I'm going to do is drag this rollerblading clip into a new sequence. And so I have my Premiere Pro layout a little bit different because this is a vertical shot that I'm just gonna start with right now as is. And I'm gonna apply my effect directly to this clip like this so we can see it. So the first thing you wanna do is select this clip and go to effect controls. And what we're going to be doing is playing with the color channels. So first set the blend mode from normal to linear dodge and then we're going to duplicate this clip twice so we have three clips so we're going to first actually before I do that let me apply the effect that I'm going to tell you to apply called color balance so if you search for color balance or if you go under image control drag that onto this clip and now in the color balance setting drop everything down to zero except for one channel. And so now what we're actually going to be doing is creating three separate clips for each color channel. And so now if we copy this, if I press option and drag and move it up, and then again, drag, option, click and drag to the next track, we have three versions of this. Now there is a little bit of a glitch that I noticed and I, found this on Premiere forums online that the color balance channel, it, when you are at 100%, it says 39 for some reason. And if you kind of play through it over here on the right hand side, it jumps to 100. But then for some reason, when you go back to that clip, it shows that it's at 39. That's just a little glitch. So all you have to do now is for these two copies, Make one of them green at 100. It's probably easier just to type in. And then the other one, we're going to set the blue to zero and the red to 100. And so now using the linear dodge blend mode and then setting each channel to a specific color or each clip to a specific color, red, green, or blue, it actually looks exactly how it should normally. The reason we did this though was because with VHS footage, there's a little bit of that sort of edge effect where there's some colors that you get, the reds and the greens on the edge of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top one, which is my red, and I'm gonna move it up. Now if I go too far, you can start to see that it gets a little bit funky. So you don't wanna to go too far. You wanna just start where your original number was and maybe go up like three or something. So nine, six, three. We're just moving it up a little bit. And I can zoom in here so you can kinda of see the effect I'm going for. And then my green channel, I'm going to move down. So like nine, five, seven, something like that. That might be a little bit too much. Let's cut those in 
down by one, nine, six, two, something like that. And now if we're zoomed out, that's starting to look a little bit more like that typical tape footage because that's just how it captured colors. All right, so that is pretty good. Next, we're gonna play with the colors even more. So to do this, I'm going to create an adjustment layer. So click the new item button, adjustment layer. For the size, it's okay, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna lay it up on top of these clips. Now I'm going to go up to and open my Lumetri color under the window panel. And what I noticed from that 1980s footage was that it was very blown out. So, and that's kind of typical. Old tape camcorders weren't able to capture whites and highlights that well. So I'm just gonna blow out my highlights and my whites by bringing up that those those exposures. And then it's a little bit of a faded look as well. So I'm gonna bring up my blacks quite a bit. I'm also going to boost my saturation just a little bit. And then depending on the tape for this, the one that I saw, there was a lot of blue going on. So there was kind of a, a blue tint. So what I can do is just drop the temperature a little bit, or we can go in here and under curves, if we take our RGB curves, blue, we could bring up the blues And maybe come down in the reds, bring down the reds. And it just, it just gives kind of like a funky color mix that a typical camcorder would have captured, not perfect colors. So let's close panels. It's looking pretty good. The other thing we get with old VHS tape is a little bit of noise, so grain. So under effects, if you type in noise, under noise and grain, under video effects, we're gonna apply that noise to the adjustment layer again. And then here, we're going to type in a number. Let's bump up to 5%, and color noise is good. Maybe let's go up to 10%. If you play through this, you can see a little bit of that noise now. Now, you don't wanna to go too crazy with it, Maybe five is good, but it's just like that subtle look that I think works pretty good. The other thing that when you're playing VHS tapes, if you're old enough to remember, happens is you get these little glitch lines playing through your tape. See how this, this glitch line going top to bottom? Well, that's an effect that we apply called wave warp. So under distort, wave warp, apply that to the adjustment layer again. Now this looks terrible. That's not what we want it to look like. We have to change some of these settings. So under wave type, we're going to change it to square. Wave width, we're going to put it at something like 600. Direction, we're going to put it at zero. And then wave speed, we're gonna put it at like 0.2. And then pinning, because we it has these little edges that appear, we're going to choose all edges or vertical edges, which is just the ones on the side. So now, if we play through this, it's automatically creating those waves going through our footage. And if it's going too fast for you, you can put the speed down to 0.1. Okay, all right, so now if we just set our endpoint and if we want to actually loop this playback and watch it in full quality, we can say loop playback. I'm gonna make sure I'm on full quality and then I'm just going to set render end out so that it renders it out and we can see that. If you don't see this little loop playback button, cl click the plus button and then drag the loop playback button which is this little square with the rectangle arrow, drag that down here into your play buttons and now you can loop your playback on your timeline. So this looks great. 
And it's great if we want to share this on TikTok, Instagram, Reels, any modern or new platform that uses vertical video at this ratio, which is nine to 16, nine wide, 16 tall. But to get that traditional VHS tape look, the aspect ratio that we commonly used back then was four to three. So what we need to do is if we wanna adjust this existing sequence, the first thing we need to do is actually nest these three clips because we're going to have to move them together and we don't want to have to do it one individually at a time. So by selecting the three clips and choosing to create a nest with them, it puts them all in one nest and now we can actually take this clip and we can move it around however we want. But first let's adjust the sequence settings. So if we go to sequence, sequence settings, how do we change this frame size to a four to three frame size? Well, we know that the width of this is 1080 and that's the widest it can be without losing quality. We could stretch it and I'll show you that in a second, but what we need to do is if 1080 is the four of our aspect ratio, if we remember our math, as little kids, what we can do is divide 1080 by four, and then we multiply this number by the other side, the horizontal ratio, which is three. So we multiply that by three, whoops, it's 270 times three, that's 810. And you'll notice here's the ratio right now, nine to 16. If we put in 810, it's a four to three ratio. If we click okay, okay, now our video is four to three ratio. We can take this nest, we can move it down. And the reason I nested it before I adjusted the sequence settings is because if you do it afterwards, it's going to actually cut off the top and bottom of your clip. Go ahead and play around with it, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. What if we want to export this in a more traditional sequence setting, like a 16 by nine, which is your typical frame size for any sort of playback now on most monitors. So say we do stretch this a little bit, 1280 by 720 is a typical 16 by nine ratio, 1920 by 1080 is another one, but we're gonna start with 1280 by 720 and now we have this, and we can move this down on this sequence. The problem is that we don't know if this is really the four by three ratio or not. So say we want this frame size to be exported, but we actually want some letterboxing on the sides. Well, if we use this vintage cinema overlay, which I've included in the class, and we're gonna put this on top of our adjustment layer. And then we set the si this to frame size. So right click and choose frame size. Now this is the four by three aspect ratio because one three three is another way of saying four to three. So it's one to one three three is another way of representing the four to three aspect ratio. That's getting a little bit advanced in terms of understanding cinematography, aspect ratio, playback, and all that kind of stuff, but it's good to know. And so now if we play this through, now we have this awesome shot that we can export at 16 by nine with the proper letterboxing on the side for a four to three look, which is what most old VHS tapes would have played back on. All right, the very last thing I'm going to do to really sell this is to add the time stamp or the date stamp, which is something that you got on your tapes as well. So if we open up our essential graphics panel, we can actually swap these now. So I'm gonna put my program monitor like this. I'm going to just add a new text layer and I already have it set to the font type, which is VCR OSD Mono, which you can download from dafont.com. It's 100% free to use, free to share. So thank you to the creator of this font, Rich, 
Rissieri Liel. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I've also included it in the download resources of this lesson if you're watching this in the course. And so now what we can do is just set the date. So depending on how you want, if you want to do it spelled out, 1991, let's call that what we want. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and we're going to put it right here. And I'm actually going to put it underneath our adjustment layers so that everything is applied to this font as well. The other thing I'm going to apply is just a little bit of a blur effect. So let's just find, I think a Gaussian blur is fine. So I'm going to apply that there. And then here in our effect controls, I'm just going to do like five. See how that adds a little bit. Let me take that on, off, on, off. You can see how that just adds a little bit, makes it look like it's part of this original clip. And then maybe I'll just have it come off after a few seconds. I think that works. And I think that sells this effect quite nicely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you're taking the full course, I hope it just makes you realize what you can do in Premiere Pro. Now, a lot of the effects that I applied here are things that I learned myself from other great creators. And now that you are more confident using Premiere Pro, you can go online, go to YouTube and find styles and tutorials and you'll be able to follow along with them and know how to navigate and apply them to your own videos. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another tutorial.